church to be a certain denomination, hallelujah. Amen. But as I was reading my Bible, I realized that the, the church refers to the body of believers, hallelujah. Amen. The church, uh, you know, the church is us, amen. amen. And I've realized that this is why we have missed it in most of the cases when we refer to a church, hallelujah. Amen. Normally when we, re we refer to a church, one will exclude themselves and refer to their church, hallelujah. Amen. That is why the Bible says that 
when, when we come together as the church, Jesus gave some to be teachers, some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, hallelujah. And then this he said, it is for the perfection of the church, so that we may be like Christ, hallelujah. So, my, so that we may grow unto the nature or the stature of Christ, hallelujah. So when you say this, they, maybe let's say you want to discriminate, you say the church is doing this, the church is doing that, you are actually referring to yourself, hallelujah. Because when we come together, we form one body, hallelujah. So this is the time where we have to take a responsibility of one another because the Bible says that we are the body of Jesus Christ, hallelujah. And then it says, can you read the end so that he may do what? So that in everything he might have supremacy. Hallelujah, so that in everything he may have supremacy. Hallelujah. The Bible in the book of Acts chapter 7 verse 49, it says that God does not dwell in houses built by men's hands. Hallelujah. It says that God, I mean, heaven is his throne. The earth is his footstool. Hallelujah. Where else can he dwell? Hallelujah. Except in us. Hallelujah. So when you start now to criticize the church, you must know that you are referring to yourselves. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible also says that when we come together, one comes with a hymn, yes. one comes with a teaching, one comes with a revelation. Hallelujah. Amen. We all come with different things to form one unity as the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. So this is, this is a, a season or this is a time where actually we must take a responsibility as the church. Hallelujah. Can we just read Ephesians 11. Let me just read it. Hallelujah. It says that, so Christ himself gave uh, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers to equip his people for the work of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining the whole measure and the fullness of Christ. Hallelujah. And then the Bible also says in the book of First, uh, First Timothy, chapter 3, verse 15, it says that the same church, hallelujah, it is the pillar and the foundation of truth, hallelujah. So Bazalani church is actually a place where we keep one another, hallelujah, where we come together and say, this is where I've wronged, and this is how I fixed my wrong, hallelujah. We refer to a church, some refer to a church as being a hospital, hallelujah, which is a place where people are not perfect, hallelujah. This is a place where we equip each other, hallelujah. This is a place where we want to grow into the full stature and, and the nature of God, hallelujah. When, 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 when Jesus comes back, hallelujah, he's coming for all of us, he's coming for full, a full church, he's not coming for only you as an individual, but God every day is trying to form in in us himself, hallelujah. So that when he comes, even at the end, hallelujah, we may be like Christ, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So Bazalani, our the reason I think one of the reasons why this message was proposed in my spirit is because of the state of the church nowadays. Hallelujah. Amen. The fact that the church is losing its own identity, hallelujah. This, the fact that the church is these days it's hopeless, hallelujah. As Christians, when we, we meet each other, we no longer comfort each other with the word anymore, hallelujah. We have so many things to say except building each other with the word of God, hallelujah. Amen. That is why we, we, we almost are losing it as the church. Uh, we're losing our identity, hallelujah. Amen. We have we have our sisters who are now going out, hallelujah. Amen. You know, they are going out looking for providers, hallelujah. Amen. Because as a church, we have never took the responsibility to teach one another, to rebuild each other with the word, to encourage each other and empower each other. Hallelujah. Amen. And here I've, I've written down one of the things that um, Jesus 
has concern over his church. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that you should seek first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto us. Hallelujah. Amen. As a church, what are we doing to seek the Lord every day? Hallelujah. Amen. What are we doing every day to become like Christ every day? Hallelujah. Amen. What are we doing every day to be fixed in God that we do not focus more on what God can do? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. When you read also James chapter 1, hallelujah, Amen. verse 22, it says that do not merely listen to the word hallelujah and not do what it says it says that it's like that person who looks at it in the mirror and forgets how he looks like amen. amen amen so as a church of god i mean we are here there are a lot of scriptures that are being preached and i could ask one of you or i can even ask myself ever since this week started which word was preached and you've acted on hallelujah Hallelujah. Because the word is preached every day, Lord. the Bible is so huge. But what's important is, what is that word that you have practiced so far? What is that word that, because some of us, we are praying, hallelujah, we believe in God so for so many things. But if I ask one person, as you believe in God for this such and such, which word have you been standing on? to put God to him and say, God, you say in your word this and this and this, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. That is why as a church we are becoming hopeless, it's because we have shifted our focus, hallelujah, unto the man himself, which is Jesus Christ. We have we, we, we've come forward to laziness, hallelujah, to a point whereby we want to pray, but we, have, we haven't even read the word, hallelujah. We don't even know what is God saying about our situation, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. When you are crying to God that time, what is, that word that you are holding God accountable to say, this is what you're saying in your word, and you haven't done. Hallelujah. Amen. So that is why I'm saying, as a church, we are shifting, and I'm listing some of the things that God wants us to go back to. Hallelujah. Amen. First, I said that he wants us to seek him. Hallelujah. And not focus on the things that we can attain. Because the Bible says that at the end, those things... They, are, they will end here on earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And then when we read in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 24, it says, What then, brothers, when you come together, each one has a hymn, has a lesson, has a revelation, has a tongue, interpretation. Let all these things be done in building up. Hallelujah. What are you doing with your gift to perfect another person, like I was saying? You know, we have other people here. They're doing their ministry. Hallelujah. They sing. And some of you will even go like, Ish, this song, I am Dirahore, Kitsene, in the spirit. Hallelujah. But when I as yourself, were you interceding? Were you at least doing anything to contribute? Hallelujah, towards the sweet aroma, so that when we meet together, there is just the smell that comes out in the service. Hallelujah. Because sometimes we rely on people. We rely on a preacher to go pray and do all these things. We rely on worshippers to come here and, you know, stir us up. Hallelujah. Where were we before we come to the service that we expect from the other people? Hallelujah. Amen. We must also be in a place, at least just pray. We say, Lord, Today I am going to meet with other believers. Father, may I not be one of those who is making people to be lazy in the service. Hallelujah. But you come, you don't come to be spectators in the church. No. It's time to take a responsibility. You don't come just to listen to the pastor and criticize after. No. It's you. Hallelujah. It's more like you always criticizing your no. You know, my no is this, my no is this, or my leg is this, and my... You forget it, it's part of you, hallelujah. That's why I'm saying we have lost the meaning of what church is, and we are now destroying church itself, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah, Hebrews chapter 3, verses 6, hallelujah. Um, the Bible says, but Christ is faithful over God's house as a son, and we are his house if indeed we hold fast our confidence and our boosting in our faith, in our hope. Hallelujah. Hebrews 3, 6, it says, But Christ is faithful over God's house as a son, and we are his house, if indeed 
we hold fast our confidence and our boost is in our hope. Hallelujah. Amen. God requires us to be confident. Hallelujah. First in his word. Hallelujah. The Bible says that Abraham did not stagger in the promises of the Lord. Hallelujah. But he believed that God, surely God, will do it. Hallelujah. Amen. And God is requiring us to be persistent, Vazalani. In everything that we do in our walk with him, he requires us to be persistent. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He wants us to be a church in which when situations will come, when trials will come, when tribulations will come, that we'll be able to stand as a church. Hallelujah. Amen. This is not, we can't be that generation where things happen in the church and we do not like, we go to another church. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, you will, you will end up finishing all the churches in Kulukwani, in Mangwen, hallelujah. Because if God has not yet attacked your man of God, I'm telling you a time will come where your man of God will be attacked. You move to other, another church or another church. There is no church that has, that has no politics, hallelujah. But God wants us, I'm just trying to say, God wants us to be confident in him, in his word. God wants us to be persistent in him, hallelujah. There is this, there, there is this, um, chapter in the Bible, hallelujah, it talks about the persistent widow, hallelujah. Amen. It says this widow persistent, hallelujah, on the unrighteous judge, and he said to him, give me justice for my adversities, hallelujah. Amen. He was persisting, and the judge, you know, the judge said, this woman, it's not that I fear God, that I will give her these things. It's not like I fear what people will say. But you know, she, the way she's persisting, she's giving me no choice but just to give. Hallelujah. But we have a church today that we pray for one thing today, we forget tomorrow, or we pray for one thing today and then we give up and say, God is not you know, hearing us and whatnot. And we are not persistent like that woman. Hallelujah. God says, if you do that unto me also, wouldn't I? As your father, give you whatever you need. Hallelujah. We need to persist. Hallelujah. We need to make fervent prayers as Christians. Hallelujah. This thing of us, whenever we need answers, we go to a certain man of God or want to pray prices in our generation and must see. Hallelujah. Because God has called us to himself. Hallelujah. And fellowship is for all of us. Hallelujah. We must inquire from the Lord for ourselves, hallelujah. Amen. So we need to be a persistent church who lay, who lay, who lay a prayer today.